Hi, and welcome to On Console, the video blog about my journey to becoming a certified NASA flight controller. Hi again, Jenny here. So, I'm officially command certified, which means I can control things on board the ISS. I might be a, a little bit excited. Yeah, just a little bit. Anyway, if you remember from last time, the part that comes after command training is the technical flow. Now, the technical flow will take up the rest of my one and a half to two years left of training, and it's at this point too where I'll eventually go into simulations. But that's not until segment four or five. What are segments? Well, in total, there are eight segments in the flow, and each segment has different modules inside of it. Each segment is kind of like a new section of things to learn. So since I just started, I'm on segment one, which is an overview of the comm system and 1553. So like I mentioned, this first segment was more technical details on communication, or the audio and video subsystems, and also how MDMs communicate and what they do when a failure happens. So first of all, the audio system. The audio subsystem is distributive, kind of like how our computers are with different layers. So obviously audio is incredibly important because it's how the astronauts talk to each other across the station, how they and us too talk to someone who's out on EVA, and of course, how they talk to us back here on Earth. Now in this case, under the CNC MDM, the internal audio controller, or IAC, is the king of the audio system. It pulls different components for all of their health and status. One of these components is the audio terminal unit, or ATUs, which are devices located in the different modules of the ISS. So the ATUs are kind of like telephones with different speakers and microphones. Now, the really important thing about the ATUs is that at least one has to be on at all times in every module because not only do they allow us to communicate space to space and space to ground, but they also enunciate any caution and warning events whenever something goes wrong. So the video system is responsible for you guessed it, distributing video. So this includes any internal and external cameras and all of their associated hardware. So if you've ever seen those awesome time-lapse videos of the Earth, you can thank the ISS video system. Now, of course, aside from cool videos, this is also really important for our own operations, especially robotics, because you probably don't want to be waving around a giant Canada arm without being able to see where you're going. So we communicate all this audio and video, as well as our commands and telemetry, over S-band and KU-band, which have different types of antennas on board, as well as different data rates up and down. Now, the S-band's antenna has a much larger angle range to be able to find the TDR satellite, which is how we get information back to the ground. Now, even though the S-band can find the TDRs much easier, it has a slightly slower data rate. Now, the KU's antenna is very, very tiny in its angle range, so it has to be precisely pointed to be able to find the satellite. But it has a much faster data rate, so that's why we use it for video. The second part of segment one is 1553. This is a bus protocol and is how the MDMs, or all the kings, soldiers, and peasants, talk to each other. So a bus is like a pathway of communication, and for each bus there are two channels, in case one goes down, we can bring the other one back up. So, also with buses, there's only one person in charge of a bus, and everyone else on that bus has to listen to that person. This bus controller is kind of like how the kings are to the soldiers, and the soldiers are to the peasants, and they're responsible for polling for health and status, broadcasting information, and getting responses back from everyone else on the bus. So, this everyone else besides the bus controllers are called remote terminals, and they only respond with information when they're directly spoken to. But we also have to be prepared in case we all of a sudden lose a remote terminal or an entire bus, an entire communication path. That's what 1553 FITTER is for. Ugh, Jenny, another acronym? What does this one stand for? Well, FITTER stands for Fault Detection, Isolation, and Recovery. It's a general term that we use. So in the case of 1553 Fitter, this is an automated process that the ISS MDMs go through when it notices it can't communicate with a remote terminal or an entire bus. So it tries to do what it can to fix it, but if it can't, it lets us know whether or not it thinks it was just one individual remote terminal that went down, 
or if an entire bus went down. On the flight controller side, this saves us a lot of time with troubleshooting. That's all for this episode. Be sure to check out my other sites and pages and take a look at the previous episodes if you haven't already. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next week and for many more as we get one step closer to being on console. Thanks and see you next time!